Okay, right, let's continue. Um, 1981. 1981 was the year that the Welsh Federation of Anglers entered the arena of PIPS, or SIPS, uh, which is the governing body of the World Freshwater Board. Uh, the venue this year was in England on the Wallach Raven at Ludington. Now, during the run-up to the selection of the Welsh team, uh, both North and South Wales uh, both got together. Um, now, they were invited for trial matches. Now, John Mayers, um, who, who was the Federation captain, decided, and with the help of Newport Anglers Club chairman, Dick North, that a series of matches to be held on similar waters to the Avon. Yeah, so the waters uh, that we were going to practice on was the River Usk uh, in Monmouth. Um, that was uh, quite a fast flowing river, very similar to the Avon in, in respects. Uh, and, uh, and also up, at, um, uh, up on the River Dee, up in uh, Wrexham Way, that was uh, another venue. So um, that's, that's what they decided. Yeah, so during the practice, um, having someone watch you when you're fishing, uh, especially when you're young, is a bit daunting and unsteady. Anyway, um, uh, I thought uh, I perhaps uh, blew my chances of selection uh, when uh, Dick, Dick O'North came to me and said, uh, you look a bit nervous, and I was fumbling around and I dropped a fish back in the water. Oh, I don't know. Anyway, um, however, over the series, of the matches on the Usk and later on the River Dee, uh, North Wales, uh, the team started to pick itself. Um, in other words, uh, you, the better anglers will start to come th shine through. Um, it did help my cause uh, by winning the Welsh Native Championship on the River Dee uh, during that year. Um, I caught a few a uh, few pound of dace on the Waggler and. Um, uh, even though I didn't win the match overall, I was the highest Welsh individual, so I won the Welsh Native Cup. Um, now, when the selection of the team was uh, cut back to a short list, uh, there was ten anglers concerned, and uh, subsequently, um, uh, we all or it was decided that we fished uh, the forthcoming venue on the Welsh Raven at Ludington, and uh, we would go and fish a few matches there. Anyway, so we travelled most uh, weekends leading up to the match in September. Um, now, after winning a few sections and getting a place or two and showing good form on the stick float Wagler, I was hopeful. Anyway, uh, John Mayer, the, the fishing manager, was very diplomatic in, in his selection of the team. Uh, and he, he went around asking each individual um, for their ideas, you know, the shortlist and who should be in the team. Um, you know, and anyway, um, I suppose this way uh, it was a, a diplomatic way of, uh, of, of getting the confidence and the votes from, from all the other anglers concerned. Um, anyway, when the team was finalised um, and announcing the Welsh team the week before it was uh, selected, um, it was one of the proudest moments in my match fishing uh, career uh, and you know it was my ambition to, to, to obviously to fish in the world championships and um, you know feeling the pride and, the, and the, you know to represent your country you know in your chosen sport is possibly the greatest tribute you know you, you could you could have and um, anyway so that that was great the other anglers who also showed very good form uh, leading up to that was, as I mentioned before, Richard Baton, an outstanding angler. Ken Orsey, that miser, you know, he was, he, was, he was showing very good form on the river, you know, on, his, uh, on the stick foot and waggler, using his little and often method. Uh, Keith Bean from North Wales. Now, Keith, uh, sadly, he's passed away. Uh, I, I just heard uh, last year. But uh, Keith also, uh, very dominant, very prominent, very good angler. He was selected. And Phil Davis. Now, Phil Davis, already we all knew Phil Davis because uh, he'd, he'd come down and he won matches on the Y, you know, uh, and he, he was a very good angler, so he was selected. And the last uh, angler was uh, Richard Candy. Yeah, so uh, that made four Cardiff Nomads in the team of six. 
So, as I said, uh, mentioned before, um, we nomads were very dominant, very prominent, and uh, yeah, that was quite uh, proud for the club at that stage to have four in the team. Yeah, so the Welsh team, um, as I said, after the uh, practice matches, uh, it was whittled down from about 10 anglers to, um, to the final six. And uh, unfortunately, uh, my long-time friend Clive Robbins didn't make it. Um, but Richard Candy did. Richie uh, Ferdus, he, he done work quite well. Um, uh, he managed to get in the team. Um, right, but now, for the final day, uh, oh, I say the, the first match, uh, it was decided, obviously, uh, five would fish and we'd have one reserve. And uh, again, uh, I think John Mayers more or less uh, went round us individually and asked, you know, who would we like to be fishing uh, in the team with? And, uh, you know, being very uh, diplomatic, oh, John was, you know, he could never really make a decision. Uh, he always left it to us, which, uh, you know, good thing. Um, uh, you know, was good because it, it meant the anglers could uh, carry on, make our own um, tactics and we could talk amongst ourselves without being interfered by the captain, if you know what I mean, who was a really a non-fishing captain. And um, anyway, uh, unfortunately, that was a downfall of, of the Welsh team, but that, a little bit of that later on. <laughs> um, but anyway, the, the, the team uh, fishing was myself, Richard Bainton, Ken Ornsey, Phil Davis, and Keith Bean. And uh, Richard Candy, he was reserved. So uh, that was our team. Yeah, so anyway, as I mentioned, uh, you know, representing your country in the World Freshwater Championships um, event was, uh, was going to be very memorable, you know, and as I say, one of the proudest moments of my uh, match fishing career to date. Um, on the Friday, leading up to the big weekend um, all the pomp and ceremony and uh, and we, we you know uh, was immense we, we, we all had to walk through the town uh, or Stratford, Stratford I think anyway and we were all holding aloft the uh, the Welsh flag uh, and typical <laughs> typical English rain it lashed down it well uh, you know the skies emptied and uh, and uh, we all got soaking wet and we trundled all, all the way through the uh, uh, the centre and we ended up um, in a pre-event ceremony and banquet uh, at the town hall. Yeah, so anyway, uh, drawing the pegs um, is always done the night before. And uh, anyway, drawing the night before is, is common practice. And John Mayers um, drew a good section, uh, good section number, 19, which is, uh, you know, a couple of just from the end. Uh, we were hopeful and competent as, uh, you know, as all the new boys to the event and, you know, we were all new. Uh, nobody took much notice of us, to be honest. They thought, you know, Wales, you know, all, all the pomp and ceremony and everyone was looking at England, of course, Italy, France and, you know, all the major teams. Uh, so we were going our, our way quietly. And um, anyway, when I found out uh, I drew uh, the, uh, the end section, peg 19, E19, I knew I was in with a good idea, uh, you know, good shout, because I knew there was some chub in that area. And uh, I was hoping that I was close to um, that, that um, the glory hole it's called. Um, anyway, I couldn't wait for the next day. Now, the Welsh Raven, as we all know, is some choice for colouring up, and uh, it seemed, uh, you know, fine on, on the day. Uh, although we had a lot of rain the day before, and, you know, the water was in perfect condition. And um, getting to my peg was a bit of a long walk, uh, as most of the fields were all roped off. And um, of course, drawing the end part of the section, uh, I arrived to find the river, you know, uh, as I say, all roped off. Uh, and we couldn't enter our zone, or we couldn't get uh, into our pegs uh, until uh, a whistle went, which was about one and a half hours before the actual match started. Now, it seemed a long wait, you know, uh, Obviously, you know, loads of anglers around. I, I think it was a record, uh, record amount of anglers turn up. Uh, anyway, um, as we were waiting, uh, you know, it seemed like forever. And uh, uh, anyway, the waiting was over. Um, a hoot, a large hooter sound uh, sounded through the air. And uh, anyway, 
uh, got into the zone and passing the tackle through the roped area. Um, I was, I, you know, I, I tackled up a couple of stick floats and a, and a waggler rod. Uh, it only took me 30 minutes. Um, even though uh, the thousands of eyes were watching you, you know, every moment, everything you were doing, you know, uh, it's a bit daunting, you know, when you, you know, if you've never experienced it, then, you know, it, 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 it's, you just can't describe it, uh, especially, as I say, being um, new, newish, a new lad in the, in the sport, you know, uh, it, I think in a, in a way, it put a lot of it put a lot of other anglers off, you know. Um, very good anglers, um, which I, I'll mention later on in, in the my autobiography, who become great commercial uh, and great um, anglers within, you know, uh, river fests and and wide championships and all these. But they couldn't make it in the international scene, only because I'm sure the pressure of, of, of all the anglers be behind them. But as I say, that's another story. I'll be talking about that a bit later. Yeah, anyway, coming back to, uh, as I said, getting ready, um, within 30 minutes I'd, I'd already tackled up. Uh, no, <laughs> uh, didn't know what to do because you're not allowed to break the water, you're not allowed to plumb up, you're not allowed to wet the ground bait, you know. Uh, you're not supposed to touch the water in any way. Uh, and even if you put, you know, your, your toes dangle, dangle in the water, you get disqualified. So, uh, um, but... I've got to tell you this because uh, I noticed the guys next to me, they had a, an array of tackle. It was, oh, it was like tackle shops, I'm sure. You know, I'm sure most of them owned tackle shops because they had, they had loads of rods and poles set up and, and everything on both sides of me. You know, it was, you know, there's me just with a couple of stick close and a waggler. Uh, I thought, you know, anyway, you know, how could they, you know, uh, ever get to use all that tackle in three hours, you know, they had, you know, as I said, they had whips, poles, you know, the rods, and, uh, you know, especially, you know, as I say, on a, on a river that, um, in three hours, uh, anyway, this swim I drew, it was lovely, it had a, you know, a bit of a, uh, overhanging trees opposite, it also had, um, as I say, a nice flow going, you know, going through them. I like to see the uh, the flow mainly in the middle of the river. So already I was looking at it and, and using my uh, knowledge, I suppose, that I picked up over the years, where the fish could possibly uh, lay, you know, the best uh, line of attack. As I said, the swims were only 10 metres apart, uh, and in between the swims was a one metre neutral zone. Uh, you weren't allowed to have any rods or uh, any tackle go into that neutral zone. Again, you know, you would get disqualified. You know, and, and being weary of all these things, it, it played on your mind a little bit. Um, nevertheless, uh, uh, the rule was that you could fish um, anywhere in that zone. You know, um, even though you had like a designated 10 meters, you could fish anywhere. You could fish the bottom end of it, the middle of it, the top end of it, you know, and so on. But as you know, when we fish, we like to fish on the top of our swim, so we got all the swim below us to, to work on, you know. Uh, on, on a river, you like to be able to trot. You know, you don't want to sit in the middle and cast up and, and down, but, you know. But I noticed uh, most of those anglers, that's what they were doing. But, of course, I, I went to the top of the swim, you know, knowing that, obviously, I'll get the full advantage of trotting my waggler and stick float. Now another strange uh, entity to British anglers is the um, is the five minute baiting up period. Um, you know when the whistle uh, blew, um, you got five minutes to to introduce bait. You know before the, the actual match started. Now in them days, we weren't aware of like all this balling in and, and that sort of thing. You know uh, which um, we thought that balling in would, would possibly disturb the fish so we, we didn't we didn't try that our method was going to be just loose feeding and build this, the swim gradually but I've got to tell you this because it, it was quite amusing because uh, I think a lot of the British anglers at the time hadn't seen it and what happened uh, when the, the hooter went for the five minute baited up uh, it was crazy and amusing because you know there was like brickful great fruit sized balls of ground me going boom 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 into the water it was it was i thought god this is going to disturb all the fish the fish are going to hide and we're not going to catch a bloody thing i thought <laughs> and you know i had the biggest laugh of all because i had a bit the big crowd behind me and you know as a gesture i, I got over a pinch of magus i went whoop. 
And they all laughed and, and we all clapped me. <laughs> oh, great, great. Anyway, the uh, match started and um, uh, the, the whistle blew, or uh, I think it was a big horn. And um, So I started loose feeding bronze maggots down the middle. It's quite narrow, as I said, it wasn't very wide apart. Um, and uh, I was trotting my stick, um, you know, th uh, you know, through the middle of it, like through the feed. Uh, and I started to catch some small chub. Uh, and all, you know, every time we, <laughs> this is another funny thing, every time we land a fish, everybody, uh, you know, your audience all clap you, you know, which I thought was uh, amusing. And, um, you know, when you fish these matches, you, you really, you really got to, um, you know, some people will try and block the crowd out, or you can play with the crowd. Now, I tend to play with the crowd, if you know what I mean, because I, I, you know, I'm sort of joked and jovial, and, and I think that's overcoming your nerves, in a sense, so, you know, um, as I said. So anyway, so every time I hooked the fish and landed, there was a lot of clapping going on. And, uh, you know, I, I started catching pretty consistently, you know, these small traps. Anyway, to my belief, disbelief, I couldn't believe it, the angler, right, I, I was catching right at the end of the swim, the angler below me come up from his swim, right up to the top of his swim, and started to like cast where I'm, my, my fish, where I'm catching my fish. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. But there's nothing I can do about it because that's the, that's the rule, that's the law. And anyway, he started picking a few fish off my feeding fish. <laughs> yeah, so that was a big, that was a big uh, surprise. And what could I do about it? What could I do about it? Well, not a lot. I can't do much about it. You know, I just. Uh, uh, Anyway, I'll tell you what happens now in the next. Come back, come back in the next vlog, and I'll tell you what happens. <laughs>